Uh, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I'll be speaking in English, and <laughs> not in French. Um, uh, I will start with uh, brief apologies for, on the behalf of Mr. Mr. Kurtyka uh, for not being able to join you today. Uh, the situation in Warsaw is pretty hectic at the moment. Uh, on Friday, the new composition of the government was announced and uh, Minister Kurtyka was proposed to head the newly established Ministry of Climate. That wasn't that we didn't have before. And this is still a ministry uh, to be because it yet has to be uh, approved by the parliament. Um, but the, the, the name, Ministry of Climate, should tell you something about the uh, direction Poland uh, intends to head to, uh, is already heading to. Uh, and this ministry is meant to cover part of the energy portfolio. We don't know uh, exactly what the extent will be. Uh, but uh, voices, I hear voices, nuclear will be covered. So very soon I should have the pleasure to work directly under uh, Minister Kurtyka because I, I work, as God said, in the Ministry of um, Nuclear Energy, in the Department of Nuclear Energy. And I believe my cooperation with Minister Kurtyka starts today when I'm replacing him at this conference. Uh, this is the, the official <laughs> beginning. And um, I've been asked by Claude now to, 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 to dwell more about the issue of solidarity, but I must admit I presented a more general um, presentation. I, I preferred, uh, preferred a more general presentation on where we are at the moment. This is the main goal, and I think I'll speak more about solidarity uh, in the panel uh, tomorrow, if that's okay, uh, or in, uh, in replying to your questions. And because I heard I will be replacing Minister Kurtyka only yesterday afternoon when I was still at the seacoast uh, of Poland, I'm, I hope you will not mind that I um, seek rescue in my notes <laughs> um, quite often because it's, I have very little time to prepare all this. So I, I count on the understanding. So when I look uh, in my notes, I see some figures. Uh, some of them were already mentioned by Daniela today, but I'll quickly repeat um, that according to the World Energy Outlook 2018, electricity accounts for nearly 20% of the world's total energy demand. And global electricity consumption has already exceeded 23,000 terawatt hours in 2018. So, assuming that current trends continue, electricity demand will increase by another 60% by 2040. And this is in a very optimistic scenario, because some other scenarios um, give us a number of 70%. And if we take Poland alone, um, the final, the, the estimates show us that the final demand for electricity will rise from 165 terawatt hours to approximately 20, uh, 220 terawatt hours in 2040, and this will be an increase of about uh, 34%. Um, this is an estimate that comes from the national plan for the analysis that were made for the national plan uh, for energy and climate. I also saw other estimates that talk about a 40% increase. So also this is an optimistic um, estimate, I believe. And this projected growth in electricity demand uh, becomes highly problematic when we realize that electricity production is responsible for 42 of global CO2 emissions and 48% of total sulfur dioxide emissions. And only in Poland, uh, electricity generation is still over 80% coal and lignite based and not only long ago, it was over 90% uh, fossil fuel-based uh, generation. So if we look at the estimated growth in electricity demand, we should be rather worried, to say the least. Um, it will mean, it would mean, and it should mean, that each increase in the share of electricity is another ton of carbon and sulfur dioxide emitted into the atmosphere which moves us further away from the already elusive and very ambitious target of two degrees Celsius goal set by the Paris Agreement. But luckily, when we look at the bigger picture than this, we see that this assumption is false, or at least it could be false. If we ask ourselves, is growing electrification, in the, for instance, in the transport sector, climate friendly? 
then the answer is not straightforward. Because on the one hand, it is as um, it is li limits all the traffic fumes, but on the other hand, the, the full answer may only be given uh, to this question when you look at the bigger picture. And that is, you, you verify, uh, you check the way the electricity that is used by electronic vehicles is generated. And with the right electricity generation mix, modern electrification may strongly contribute to the achievement of the climate targets. And what is more, it may be the sine qua non condition of achieving climate neutrality. So new solar installations are already more competitive than the new coal installations, almost all over the world, but they are still not competitive with the existing installations, without clear and steady support from national policies. And nuclear power plants that have entered uh, the long-term operation mode generate the cheapest electricity that is currently available. And if we make the things the right way, nuclear new build may again become highly competitive. IEA tells us that in 2040, as much as 40% uh, of the world's electricity generation uh, may come from renewables. Today, it is in more than 25%. Nuclear is currently, as Daniela has already said, about 10% of the global electricity generation, but its share is also rising globally, and hopefully nuclear will maintain the 25% of the share uh, in the EU mix, not the 15, I hope. There is no way to reverse the upward trend in electricity demand, but there is no need to do it either. I leave aside here the contribution of access to of electricity um, to the quality of life, although we should remember that even today close to one billion people continue to lack any steady access to electricity, and it is our global duty to improve the situation, which has to translate to another growth in electricity demand. But even if we limit our discussion to the energy sector, it is thanks to the growing uh, electricity demand that the new <coughs> clean technologies are <coughs> developing and that old and less efficient ones are decommissioned. And this drive for development spills over to other sectors of the economy. So technologies are keen, are key to clean electricity in the future. And I speak here about all low emission technologies. Clean electricity must also include nuclear energy. Without this, is it impossible, as it was um, presented today, to progress towards climate neutrality. No clean technology should be abandoned if it can act to quicker energy transition. This is why we should target zero emissions rather than 100 renewables. And if we respect the technology neutrality principle and make use of all available low emission options depending on our country conditions, the growth of electrical demand will not be uh, not, not only be climate friendly, it will also provide new opportunities. And it will provide people who today do not have sufficient access to electricity with not only new, but most importantly, equal opportunities. And finally, I want to stress um, the, the point about solidarity, the need for solidarity and the need for just transition as regards climate action. Solidarity takes into account different starting points and diverse local conditions. We dare say uh, that the challenge put in front of Poland um, in the EU arena is much greater and much complex, much more complex than it is for the rest of the EU countries. However, um, as we see it, solidarity is not only about supporting just transition to the workforce, to the creation of decent jobs, and the latter, as well as the social dialogue in this regard, is obviously much needed, but we see the need for solidarity in combating climate change much more broadly. And if you allow, because the time is running out, I will uh, speak about this more extensively tomorrow or today in the um, Q&A, um, in, in my intervention tomorrow as well. And for, with this, I'd like to finish for now with the speech. Thank you very much for your attention.